hi this is mcb2 tutoring um this video i'm going to talk about gags which is short for glyco amino glycans and glycoproteins so basically what these are are um various protein molecules with chains of sugar added onto them so we're going to talk about more specific of the organization of these sugar chains and how they're attached um, but first, I want to start off by talking about how these basic building blocks are made. So, over here, I, these are just some examples of what these sugars look like. So, you basically have sugars, um, and you can have some sulfate attached, and often they actually have some um, nitrogens attached, like over here, nitrogens. Um, so, that's where... I wrote here in this outline. Um, the pathways for making these specific sugars, which are over here, these are specific sugars, um, stem from two different steps in glycolysis. So let's start by drawing like a very basic uh, diagram of glycolysis. So you start off with glucose. Glucose goes to glucose 6-phosphate. Glucose 6-phosphate goes to fructose 6-phosphate. Then from here on, fructose 1,3-bis phosphate. And this step is, you know, highly regulated. By PFK. So PFK1 is highly regulated and it can go back and forth. Um, and then over here, blab. Not very important, but there's one more step I want to have here because it sort of relates to one of the so PEP here is a high energy molecule. This is actually used for one of the steps later on. And then from here it goes to pyruvate. And then TCA. Cycle. Okay. So here's a very general gist of um, glycolysis. What's important to note is these two. Glucose 6-phosphate and fructose 6-phosphate. They will give you very different sugars in that in the glucose 6-phosphate they don't have an amino group they don't have the nitrogen no nitrogen right so no nitrogen in the groups so if you look at this diagram these are just some examples of the sugars but if you look at here this one doesn't have any nitrogen so and then this one also doesn't have nitrogen this one doesn't have nitrogen so these three sugars in this example will have started from the glucose 6-phosphate and not the fructose. And I will show you why. Um, so let's just talk about the glucose 6-phosphate. There's just no steps that it will add sugar here. So glucose 6-phosphate goes to glucose 1-phosphate and from here they're just going to add the um, the high energy nucleotide. So in this case, it's going to be a UTP used. It's going to add here, and this will give me a UDP glucose. So this is the same um, idea as the glycogen synthesis. You want to add a high energy molecule to the sugar first, and then you can use that energy by getting, by hydrolyzing that bond to add this. Uh, nucleotide plus sugar and then you can use the nu the energy from the high energy bond to add the sugar onto the growing chain of sugars. So uh, one of the what you can do with the UDP glucose over here is you, this one can go into making glycogen. Right? And then this can also go and uh, can be changed into UDP galactose. And here it can go on into making a lactose. So if you just have another glucose molecule that adds here, you can make a lactose out of it. So lactose is the 
disaccharide found in milk. Um, another important thing to note here is that uh, UDP glucose can be changed to UDP glucuronate. And from glucuronate, UDP glucuronate, it can be um, changed to glucuron glucuronate. So notice here, it has to be in the form of um, the UDP glucose changing to UDP glucuronate. Um, it cannot be done directly through glucose. Same thing with galactose. So glucose can be indirectly made into galactose, but you can't. It has to be um, in the form of UDP glucose changing to UDP galactose. Just something to note. Um, so all of these do not have the nitrogen. So now we're going to talk about the stuff that actually has the nitrogen on it, and that will be everything starting from here, starting from. Fructose 6-phosphate will contain nitrogen, right? So fructose 6-phosphate will give you amino sugars. And amino sugars, by that we're just saying, um, if you look at this, let me erase this. So if you look at this little diagram here, you have a nitrogen here, you have a nitrogen here, nitrogen here. These sugars that contain nitrogen on some of its groups, um, these will have started from the fructose 6-phosphate pathway. So the reason for that is the very first step after the fructose 6-phosphate, you're going to add the um, nitrogen. And the nitrogen comes from uh, glutamine. So if you recall, glutamine has many nitrogen groups attached to it. And it's going to donate one of these nitrogen groups and then itself is going to become a glutamate. But the important thing is, it has now donated an amino group. So that's the nitrogen donated. So basically this step is like donating a nitrogen. Um, the resulting product is, uh, you don't really need to know it by name, but it's actually, uh, it's actually uh, glucosamine 6-phosphate. From glucosamine 6-phosphate, some of the other things that can happen here is if you also notice there are some um, acetyl groups in, in these sugars. Um, the acetyl groups are added over here in this pathway as well. So we have acetyl, CoA, um, donating its acetyl group. Okay, so over here the acetyl group is donated. And from here on, you're going to get a molecule like N acetyl glucosamine 6 phosphate. So N acetyl glucosamine. Phosphate. Um, there are a few steps, and I'll give you various other types of sugar that are listed here. But what's most important is at the very end. Um, yeah, we're gonna skip a few steps, fast forward, and over here it will give you this N acetyl uh, nano. Menosamine 6 phosphate. Uh, what happens at this step is this phosphoenopyruvates uh, will be used to add to this uh, molecule. So um, PEP will be added directly to the, uh, to the ring itself, and this is what gives you. Nana, which is short for, I'm going to scroll up just very quickly, it will give you this molecule right here, um, N, actually this part of it, N acetylneuraminic acid. This is typically found at the end of 
various sugar chains. So, and what's also unique about Nana is, if you notice, um, I will bring that up again later, but this one is actually activated by a CMP, so it's a monophosphate instead of a diphosphate like the other sugars. So instead of having a diphosphate um, sugar as um, the energy source to add onto a chain, this has a monophosphate. Okay, and over here it can also branch out to a few other um, sugar molecules such as UDT, glucosamine. Okay, so let me zone out just a bit. What I want you to know from here is, if you notice here, there's a whole bunch that use UDP, right? And there are only two that uses the GDP as the uh, the higher energy molecule for the addition onto a new from addition onto the chain. So most of them use the UDP, and there's only one that uses the CMP, and that's Nana. This one is Nana. Okay. And what I also want to reiterate that is that any of the amino sugars came from fructose 6-phosphate. So these have nitrogen. Okay. So please be aware of that. And if you want another visual of it, so all of the ones up here, no nitrogen. And all the ones down here have a nitrogen. And where did the nitrogen come from? And the nitrogen came from glutamine. Think of the amine part making the amino sugar. Okay? So this is it for this video, and the next video we'll talk about how uh, how it's how these sugar building blocks are being assembled into various sugar chains, and how the linkages are. Okay.